this is going to be one of the best Champions League finals in years. You've got... So this has been the state of the Copenhagen office over the last few weeks. And like the rest of the footballing world, it seems like everyone is focused on three things. Liverpool, Real Madrid and what goes down in Kiev. But here's the thing, there's actually another European Cup being played for. And this year, it involves one of the biggest, most dedicated supporter groups on the continent, if not world. That's right, exactly 25 years on from their first and only ever European Cup, Olympic Marseille have made the final of the Europa League against Atletico Madrid. And to add to that, the final is being held at the home of their heated rivals, Olympic Lyon. So I got Martina to make some calls. Hello, Mojo. Hello, Mojo. Hello, we're going. We're doing it, baby. And just like that, we're joining one of the biggest ultras groups for their biggest match in a quarter of a century. Ladies and gentlemen, Ryanair is delighted to welcome you to Marseille 20 minutes early. What I always find most impressive about Marseille is just how this is a major city, the third biggest in France, yet yeah, there's only one team for this city. It's Marseille or nothing. Basically, the club hooked us up. We're just taking an old gander inside the Stade Velodrome right now. Yeah, it's an unbelievable piece of this football is as history. As any stadium I've ever seen. I've never seen a roof like this. It just keeps swirling. So it's two sets of ultras on both ends. Exactly, and then oh, down by the doing Yankees. A chant across from the stadium. <laughs> The fact that it's one of the only supporters groups where you have two really solid stands at both ends of the ground. See, this season's been ridiculous, right? They're fighting for Champions League spot. They got their new owner. They're living like their personal little dream. Now they're in the Europa League final. We're going to that? That's the plan. Let's get Cuscus first. So we've just rocked up behind the training center here in Marseille and there's a wall with the entire club's history. But the most interesting thing to point out here, L, is the supporters groups. What, what, what's really notable for me is just how many ultra, different ultras groups there are. And they all kind of sit alongside each other. It's kind of like, they're not divided or they are divided or how does it all work? I mean, they're all united by the sensation that there is one club in the city, which is Marseille, and they are all interested in protecting the best interests of their football team, Marseille. They all worked on this mural together, which is kind of the significance of the whole thing, is that they all sort of put in in moments where, you know, the club would need their support. They all might have different philosophies where they started off from, but they all have, you know, the progression of Marseille and the betterment of football in the city in mind. We've just rocked up, and we're about to walk into the South Winners Clubhouse. That's the dude who runs this place. The guy in the middle with his middle finger out. What? That's the guy who we're going to speak to later. Oh, the guy in the middle of the photo with his middle <laughs> finger out. <laughs> what a dude. La signification de demain? Oui. Je réalise pas encore. Je réalise pas encore ce que je vis. Déjà Marseille, notre fierté, c'est à jamais les premiers. On restera jamais les premiers à avoir rapporté la Ligue des Champions en France. Le premier club français et pourquoi pas le premier à avoir rapporté la Coupe de l'UEFA. Est-ce qu'on peut faire ce doublé de « Ah, jamais les premiers » Ben, en fait, là, c'est la place à Munich. C'était, en fait, on n'était pas beaucoup. On était, on était 250 winners sur les 25 000 Marseillais. À l'époque, on ne voulait pas faire entrer de gens. On était un noyau, on n'était que des Marseillais. Pour que dans une armée, à l'intérieur d'un château, pour être fort, il fallait ouvrir nos frontières. Wow. Et c'est ce qu'on a fait. Et on est passé de 250 à 6080. Et maintenant, de commencer à ça, vous êtes le, 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 le groupe plus grand de, ouais, de Marseille. Grand, même, même, je pense, d'Europe. We got a many clubs. Roma, they love Totti, Chelsea, John Terry. The, play, the players are a legend. But here, when I talk to people, it's like the legend of the club was a fan. Yeah, we have a legend. He was the uh, former leader, capo, Depe, Depe Ricci. He was always shirtless. Every game, even in Moscow, in Zagreb, everywhere. He, and then he was... In the uh, winter? Yes, of course, my friend. Because the players, they come and they go, they go away because about the money. Him came without nothing, just with the love. Uh, Marseille is the uh, biggest team in France tomorrow. It will be for you. Remember this in 20 years later. <laughs> It's funny, you know, I'm always hearing about the craziness of Marseille. Everyone's talking about the craziness of Marseille, but it feels like everyone's kind of 
kind of calm. Mehdi was saying that everyone actually has been holding their breath the last week, the whole city, because of this match. It's yeah, kind of like Marseille, is... this is nothing. This is the calm before the storm. Tomorrow morning, it's pastis and sardines right here. Yes. We're going to march to yes. 25 buses. It's going to be unbelievable, and all of this bated breath... It's going to come out. It gets fucking released. I mean, it's beyond what I was expecting. It's 10.30 in the morning. They've got the thing. Players lift. They're drinking the cab. The whole thing's jumped up and mental. Yo, watch out, watch out, watch out. It's gonna happen. These guys are already shooting military grade flares into the sky. I feel like they're gonna take out a plane before they even hop on the bus. It's just incredible. And what I don't understand is like, how, how do you have this many flares? There's this is the thing that's natural to Marseille, right? The first clubs in Europe come from places like Genova or come from places like Marseille, they're port cities. They've right. always had flares so the boats could get by at night. So using these flares is a representation of what the tradition is in Marseille. If you look over there, there's a woman still selling fish as they're doing all this stuff. Like These people are completely connected to the ocean yeah. and lighting off 2,000 flares is the first way they're going to express that. But they're still going to run out then, are they? Because it's going to keep bringing them on the boats. Yeah, exactly. They just have an infinite amount because the whole city needs people. Oh my God, what is that vessel? just a Europa League final. This is a Europa League final in the stadium of your enemies. Yes, that's... No that's wonder it's crazy. It's for that the day is crazy. Right, well we've made it to uh, Lyon Stadium and it seems like half of Marseille is here. I can assure you, every single tour wow. bus in the south of France is here. Every flare that is possibly able to be purchased here and the madness of being promised is already, we have already seen it. So from about this point, we all know what happened. Things went south, basically. First, Marseille defender Anguissa handed Atleti the opening goal. Then Marseille's star forward Paillet got injured and hobbled off the pitch in tears. Then Griezmann handed them another L right after half-time. Then Marseille hit the post. And in the last minute, Atleti finished it off. But this was never about the result. This was about the return of Olympic Marseille, one of Europe's greats, returning to the big European stage. As if you look at what everyone was talking about after the match, it wasn't the result so much as the noise, the numbers, and the flares.